Do you want to see someone so utterly savaged by facts? That's what I have for you. Republican Congressman Tom Tiffany, not someone that we've talked too much about, but I appreciate the alliteration. He went on CNN and tried to continue perpetuating these talking points about the Biden crime family and how Biden is somehow corrupt when he's obviously not and Republicans have failed to uncover such evidence. And Boris Johnson just does such a good job of ripping to shreds the nonsense of this guy, semi-respectfully, but brutally with the facts. Now, before playing this, the context is that as we see Republicans desperately are attempting to distract from their own lack of serious governance, their own policy failures, they're trying to help Trump in this election year. And so they're now holding Attorney General Merrick Garland in contempt of Congress. That's today's stunt. Yesterday's was attacking Dr. Fauci. Today's he's holding Merrick Garland in contempt of Congress. And that's because he's not handing over an audio tape of the conversation between Robert Hur and President Joe Biden, which is standard operating procedure for the DOJ. And that it comes as the transcript was already turned over long ago. So unnecessary. But they're holding him in contempt of Congress because he won't hand it over. And that caused, for some reason, a conversation on CNN about these same allegations against Biden that are so worn out, so thoroughly debunked that you would think, I would think, we would think that a normal, rational person would stop perpetuating them because it would be embarrassing, right? I don't want to reveal how little I care about the truth by spitting out this nonsense that Boris Johnson can just slap down. But that's what this Tom Tiffany guy does. Here we go. And there's no evidence in any of the documents put out by the Oversight Committee that a single dollar went to President Biden when he was in office. Therefore, there's no evidence that he did anything illegal, that he abused his power uh, or that he abused his power in office to help his uh, family members or, or friends get wealthy. The world is ending. And that's why you need to buy my emergency preparedness kit for your bunker. No, of course not. Uh, but that's the message that people like Alex Jones deliver to get their followers to buy hundreds of millions of dollars worth of junk at their store and pills for all sorts of things. I don't do that. Main way you can support the work that we're doing is free and it's just clicking that subscribe button if you haven't done it already, make it happen. Yeah, well, Joe Biden has a check in uh, in the amount of forty thousand dollars that was has his name on it. You got another two hundred thousand dollar check that but, came from Jim and Sarah Biden to him. I mean, sir, there's sir, over I twenty have million dollars. Here. So, I actually have that check here. That was a check from twenty eighteen when he was not vice president, and it actually says that this was a reimbursal. This was a loan repayment from his brother. So, you can make the case that the this is again don't. Don't get confused because the tone is calm by the other knockout that's going on here logically uh, where he tries to bring this up and Boris Johnson, uh, Sanchez, did I say Boris Johnson earlier? And that's the former prime minister of uh, Britain. This is Boris Sanchez says, I have the receipts. You're wrong. Hush up. So you can make the case that the Bidens d did not do this while Joe Biden was vice president, but I think it's contrary to the record. And it's contrary to what happened when Joe Biden was vice president and he went and called off the prosecutor in Ukraine in regards to the Burisma oh, investigation. Sir, that, 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 has been, that has been debunked. That prosecutor uh, was unanimously disliked by both Republicans and Democrats. And even EU officials said that he was corrupt and they wanted him out. Nevertheless, Congressman, we do have to leave the conversation. Think about that. You dare, which sometimes is justified. Sometimes you want to dare to do this. But you better have your decks in a row before you do. You dare to come out and say that President Biden, the president, I should say, the sitting president of the United States of America is corrupt. All right. That's a big claim, but you might be able to back it up. Like when people say that about Trump, you can actually back it up with evidence. And so, and no, there's no purpose for this pencil to be in my hand. 
but it just makes me feel more authoritative. So here we go. Um, Because I'm thinking I could write something down at any moment and it would help my case. Um, (laughs) And so he surely has thought enough about this to be ready with evidence. And his evidence of Biden being corrupt while he was vice president is a loan repayment from when he wasn't in any position of power with his brother, he gave money and then he got the same amount back with no interest. How would that be beneficial at all to Joe Biden? Because now, now he's breaking even, right? You give someone money, they give you the exact same amount back. Picture this. I know Tom, Tom, Tiffany. Uh, <laughs> let's think about it this way. Imagine I hand you a dollar. Then you hand me that dollar back. I didn't, there's not two dollars anywhere. Just one dollar, okay? So now I have my dollar back. I've broken even. It's a similar thing, just with more money, with what Biden did. And this is my new thing. If they're going to insult our intelligence by continuing to perpetuate these debunked ideas, then we should insult their intelligence on occasion through explanations like that. And then he brings up the the, uh, top prosecutor in Ukraine. Which, if you've watched this show for some time, you know is a thorn in my side. Meaning, whenever I consider the fact that so many people are walking around thinking that's proof of corruption, it reminds me that we're in a rough spot as a country. And I say that parallel to us being in a great spot as a country in many ways. Crime plummeting, economy getting a lot stronger, and just being a country that I'm proud to call my home and also got some things we got to deal with such as people getting such bad sources of information that they would think that Biden in alignment with U.S. policy on this guy and our international allies policy on this guy stance on this corrupt prosecutor would go try to get him fired successfully Something that we've now found out was the contrary interest to the one that executives at Burisma, where Hunter Biden was associated, what they were looking to happen, that that somehow is Biden being corrupt. It doesn't make any sense. It's not what the executives wanted at Hunter's company. It's what all of our allies and the Obama administration wanted. And it's Biden just doing his job. And they twisted that into he was doing it to help Hunter and it was corrupt. So... It's unfortunate that we had to go through this over and over again, but they keep bringing it up, so we keep doing it. But credit there to Boris Johnson. Now I do want to play for you on this contempt of Congress nonsense. Jamie Raskin, one of the best in the House of Representatives, making some fantastic points here. Rather than admit defeat in this bumbling operation and look for some other way to actually aid the public good, they've decided to flail about in mock outrage against a series of phantom tyrants in the hopes of distracting everyone from this epic flop. Their first distraction was to impeach Secretary Ali Mayorkas as a paltry consolation prize, but that pathetic decoy action blew up in their hands. Then the plan was to skip the mundane work of casting votes and actually doing committee business to travel on a collective spiritual pilgrimage on Amtrak to New York City to attend the criminal trial of an unmentionable American felon, one of 19 million in the country. But that strange journey to Mecca also blew up in their faces when this mystery political false prophet was convicted unanimously by a jury of his peers on dozens of felony criminal counts in a fair American trial. They tried to salvage the credibility of this bizarre expedition by blaming the American justice system for being weaponized against Republicans. But this political extremism quickly melted away when the son of President Biden, the original target of their wrath, was also prosecuted and convicted, like another disarmed felon whose name may now not be spoken on the floor, apparently by a unanimous jury of his peers on all counts against him. And that trial, unlike the trial whose very existence must be sent down the Orwellian memory hole to save someone hurt feelings, was actually tried in the federal system. So what's left to do now? Well, let's hold the Attorney General of the United States, Merrick Garland, in contempt, of course. This will be sure to placate 
an unrepentant and anonymous convicted felon from New York and distract everybody else for a day or two. I confess it's a bit rich, Mr. Speaker, to be asked to hold the... And he just keeps going. But I have to say, I don't have sympathy. I don't, frankly, for the MAG Republicans being dishonest when they get thrashed <laughs> by someone like Jamie Raskin. But... I do not envy their position, I would say. They've put themselves there. But having to be on the other side of someone with the intelligence and the communication abilities of someone like Jamie Raskin, that's a tough spot to be in. And I feel the same way about Eric Swalwell, who had this to say on the House floor. This is not about the contempt of the Attorney General. It's about MAGA Republicans' contempt for the Constitution, the rule of law, and democracy. And it's about who any of us came here to fight for. MAGA Republicans are fighting for one person at the cost of what your constituents actually care about. You're fighting for a felon. You're fighting for a felon. On this side, we're fighting for working people. We're fighting for the kids and the teachers and the soldiers and the cops and the firefighters and the bakers and the butchers. People who go to work every day and count on us to do something for them. Yeah, and I play that because, and this is a place we've, we've wrapped up segments many a time. Which is, Mag, I, I don't even, I don't think we have a good relationship, you and I. Um, so I don't know if your ears are, are willing to hear what I have to say, but if you can... Pry him open for a second. Even if you hate Eric Swalwell, Jamie Raskin, me, or anyone else. Uh, <laughs> sounds like Trump. Me. I just want you to know that MAG Republican leaders, they're not helping you. They're riling you up. It's exciting. Oh, going after Merrick Garland or Marjorie Taylor Greene's going after Dr. Fauci or Marjorie Taylor Greene's going after and then list a gazillion names that day. Oh, as I'm smacking my mic. But what are they actually doing that's making your life better? Because when we look at the policy record of Democrats in the first two years of Biden's presidency, you have a record that is something to speak of. Investments in infrastructure projects that are going to make communities better. A massive investment in public safety, law enforcement, violence reduction. And now we're seeing violence reduction in a major way with crime plummeting. You have attempts to address the burden that prescription drug prices are and lower those costs. You have investments in forms of energy that are cheaper for consumers and better for the future of our planet and policies that clearly work in the interest of working Americans, right? As was mentioned by Eric Swalwell. So when I go through, even just on paper, take away the personalities, take away that I'd love to just hang out with Jamie Raskin. Okay. Jamie hit me up. Um, set all that aside and just on paper, what is it that they've accomplished? I have a list of things that I could, and I have presented to people. So then I can say, here's what I wish they'd done more, and I'm going to demand that of elected representatives. And then we can have these level-headed conversations. You can be maybe a little more conservative than me, a little more liberal than me, whatever. And we can have policy discussions, and we can do what's best for the American people on policy. But what's happened is MAGA just threw the conversation of policy altogether aside in service of these political stunts that ultimately, ultimately are in the interest of one thing, person, and that's Donald Trump. And that doesn't serve you. Because I'm sure you could not name a single thing that House Republicans have passed through Congress that's making your life better. Because they have it. And no amount of hearings about Hunter Biden being nude on a poster that Marge Taylor Green puts up, no amount of people being held in contempt or being impeached or whatever will fill the void that is present because of the lack of serious solutions to problems in your life. 
Let me know what you thought of all that in the comments and if you want to get more of this show, but the members only exclusive version of it, you can do so by clicking the join button below.